Hi, I'm going to show you two ways to solve a intermediate level programming problem that you see here. Um, display the numbers from 1 to 100 that are not divisible by both 4 and 7. But for those numbers divisible by 4, show this symbol, the divided by symbol, and a 4 instead. And for those divisible by 7, show divided by 7 instead. Um, so I'm going to run one of these solutions and you can see what the expected output is and then I'll talk about how it works. So we started with the numbers from 1 to 100 and the ones that are divisible by 4 look like this and the ones that are divisible by 7 look like this. The ones that are divisible by 7 and 4 are not even here. So what's the first number that's divisible by 7 and 4? 28. So let's look through here, and there's no 28. So that part's working right. Here are two different ways to solve the problem, and there are others that you could come up with. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to, to understand and to write solutions like this. Um, let me start with the second solution, because it's more, more uh, traditional, I suppose, in that it uses nested ifs, if with else, if... Um, so, I need to teach you some things first. For instance, this 1 to 100, what does that do? 1 to 100 produces a range of numbers, 1 to 100. It's a convenient way just to get 100 numbers. All right, and map, we know about map yet? Map allows us to visit each of these numbers in turn and do something with them. So we could, for instance, say um, 1 to 100 map n print line n. And what we get is these 100 numbers uh, printed with the print line. Or we could say, we could use map to do something like this. This will multiply each number by 2. So here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. 1 to 100 produces a range of numbers. Map allows us to visit each of those numbers in turn and then either change it into something else or take some action, possibly using each of those numbers. Uh, I've explained the 1 to 100 and map. Now let's look at this function that I've created here called div by. So let's just put this in. We've created, uh, oh, and it needs, it needs something called n to be uh, defined. So let me create a val n and set it to, let's say, 4. And now I can use div by. I can say, is divisible, is, is n divisible by four, and we should get a true-false response. And the response is true because n, which is four, is evenly divisible by four. Uh, now, is that divisible by seven? No, it's not. But if we change n to seven, is that evenly divisible by seven? Yes. All right, we created a function called div by whose job is to tell us whether um, the value n is evenly divisible by the number, by the argument to the function. So if you call div by 7, then div is 7, and we use this remainder operator here to tell us the remainder of dividing n by the divisor. Uh, let me just show you some examples of using that remainder operator first. Um, what is the remainder of dividing 4 by 2? Is there a remainder? Is there a non-zero remainder? Uh, here's the answer, 0. Um, so what if I say, is the remainder of dividing 4 by 2 0? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. So you um, see some examples of how this works. 
we've covered down to the div by uh, defining this div by method. Um, now I'm going to go to this bottom one and look at some ifs. So um, let's copy some of this code here. and get Scala to stop complaining about it. Okay, so that's valid, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, what's happening is we're visiting the numbers 1 to 100, and we're assigning each in turn to n, and then we've defined this function that does something with n, but we've not called the function. Um, let's call the function. Let's just say is it divisible by 4? And now we should see some things over here. Take a look. False, 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 true. What does that mean? That means that 1 is not evenly divisible by 4, 2 is not, 3 is not, but 4 is, and so should be 8 and all the other multiples of 4. Let's just change this to div by 7, and now you should see um, every seventh one is true. So 7 is divisible by 7, and so is 14, and so on. Um, what if we did divisible by, by 4 and divisible by 7? What do you expect to see here? I would expect to see 27 falses followed by a true because the first 27 integers are not divisible by both 4 and 7. Now I'm going to show you this using if, how to solve this problem using if. We'll say um, if divisible by 4, then print line, and I need to copy this here. Um, so now we get something came out for 4 and 8 and 12 and all the other multiples of 4. And then if I duplicate this line and I say if divisible by 7, then show this. 4, 7, 8, 12, 14. Okay. Um, now, what else do we need to do? We need to skip it if it's divisible by both 4 and 7. So we need to do something like if divisible by 4 and divisible by 7, then we want to do nothing. So we'll just put a little comment here, do nothing. We want to skip it. Then we'll say else. And then we'll do the rest. If it's divisible by 4 and 7, OK, let's see what's this complaint here. Um, let's put braces around it like this better. And the whole thing is shaded because I really should be using for each here instead of map. I, I won't explain that right now, but I just want to clear up that. Okay, so if it's divisible by 4 and 7, then we do nothing. Otherwise, we consider whether it's divisible by 4 and whether it's divisible by 7. Um, and then if it's, if it's not divisible by 4 or 7, then we want to just produce the number. Um, so this is not quite right because we're getting now 1, 2, 3, and then the symbol for divisible by 4, and then a 4. And we're not supposed to get the 4 here. So somehow we have to do this print line only if these others aren't true. Well, um, what if we did something like this? Uh, 
if it's divisible by 4, do that. Else if, divisible by 7, do that. Else, this. Let's see if this is right. 1, 2, 3, divisible by 4. 5, 6, divisible by 7. 4, 9. And let's see if 28 is, is uh, produced or not. It's not good. I think we have a solution here. That's good. Um, you can see I did something different over here. Um, so I want you to understand how this works. And in order to do that, you need to understand about um, option, uh, about something called option. So take a look at this. Sum one. produces a sum of integer. And I can say, um, so a kind of a longer form of doing this would be val s equals, val s where s is option of int is set to sum one. And I can do another one, val n option of int is equal to none. And what's the complaint? Oh, n is already used. So I'll say ns instead. ns and s are both option of int. One of them has a value, the other one doesn't. And this is a way in Scala where you can indicate that something is present or it's absent. And if you're familiar with Java, Java programmers often use null for this purpose. All right, uh, it's time now to remove some of these print statements. And I'm gonna change this back to map. And I'm gonna map over one to 100. And I'm gonna make some little changes here. If it's divisible by four and seven, I'm gonna say none, because we're skipping it. Otherwise, in these other places, I'm gonna change print line to sum. And let's see what we get. We now have a vector which uh, in the Scala collections is a, it's a type of a sequence of numbers. So we have some one, some two, some three, some four, some uh, divisible by four, some five, and so on. Um, let's just see what happens when we get to 28. 28, there's a none because we're skipping that one. All right, this sum and none is kind of ugly. What we want to do is throw away all the nuns keep the rest, but simplify them. So that's what flatten does. When I flatten it, look what we get now. Um, okay, what's wrong? I need another set of parentheses for that to work. Now you see it's back to the way it should be. 1, 2, 3, divisible by 4, and 28 is skipped. So 28 takes a sequence of option of something, and it throws away all the ones that are none, and then it removes the option part and just gives you the whatever it is. Um, and here we have strings and integers, so this is, this is uh, some other type. All right, the last thing I want to do is call... Make string. So let me show you what make string does. If I have a sequence of numbers or names or whatever, let's use let's use names. You can see that it looks like this. Here it's a list, Sam, Sue, and Tim. But if I call um, make string on that, so I say nums dot make string, and I put let's say um, a hyphen between the two. 
then now we have the three elements separated by a hyphen. And we can put anything in here. We can put a comma and a space. Now we have something like this. If we want, we can put this backslash n, which represents a new line. And now they're on separate lines. Sam, go to the next line, Sue and Tim. All right, that's um, make string. And F, so back to our main problem here, we call make string and we'll separate by a comma and a space. And let's see what we have now. There we go. A very simplified way of having these values separated by commas. And uh, so that's, that's one solution. And then this is just formatted a little bit differently. Um, it looks a little bit more like this. And then I put the, the else if all in one line and without this. And let's see. That's looking better. And I, had a, I have a print line over here because when you run this program um, by itself, not using the uh, worksheet feature of IntelliJ IDEA as I am here, we need to use print line to cause the output to appear. Um, so this, let's just look at this. This is nicely formatted the same thing. So uh, just to review, we're going to print everything inside here what's inside there, 1 to 100, and we're mapping over that, so we're considering all these numbers 1 to 100, and we've, we're defining a function called div by that tells you whether n is divisible by the argument, the number that is passed. And then we have um, an if statement here, this is all of it, and we see if the number n is divisible by 4 and 7, and if it is, we, we yield or produce none. Um, which tells us down here that we're going to skip it. Now, if it's not divisible by both 4 and 7, then we consider whether it's divisible by 4. And if it is, then we produce sum of this. If it's not divisible by 4, but it's divisible by 7, then we produce this. And if none of the above are true, then we produce the number itself. Now I'm going to show you a um, what's called a truth table that is useful for reasoning about these uh, kinds of decisions that we need to make. Um, we're considering two things. Uh, is n divisible by 4? Is n divisible by 7? And then there are four ways you can combine those um, where both of those are false, where just this one is true, where this one is true and this one is not, and where they're both true. Let's look at what we do in all the cases. Um, if, and I might not go in the order that you see them here, if, it's, if both are true, that n is divisible by 4 and n is divisible by 7, then we yield nothing. If um, n is divisible by, let's look at this one next, if n is divisible by 4, then we show our percent 4. And if n is divisible only by 7, then we show the percent 7. And if none of those things are true, if n is not divisible by 4 and n is not divisible by 7, then we show the number n. Now, I'd like you to see how this truth table maps closely to, or looks very much like, this, these four lines of code here, case, false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. And some n, some 7, some 4, and then none or nothing. And maybe I could just change this to say none. If you think about this kind of problem with a truth table, then this approach here might be a little easier to read than this approach here with the nested ifs. 
In order to understand this, well, let's look at what's different between these two. These, these four lines are different, that's for sure. Um, the word match here, that's, for, that's different, and this is different. Notice that we're only calling div by 4 and div by 7 here instead of uh, in this uh, solution 2 where we call it here, 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 and here. I need to show you how, uh, so there are two concepts left to learn, um, tuples and match. Let's look at tuples. A tuple is simply a grouping of two or more elements. So I could say um, true, false, and what does that turn into? That turns into this tuple of true, false, or I can say uh, val uh, a equals true, false. And um, let's see here. This, comma, this, and they're in parentheses. That makes a tuple. And then with that tuple, we can do a match. So we want to see if, if this div by 4, div by 7 matches which of these four possibilities it matches, and it will match one of them. Match, how does match work? You say match, you have a uh, open curly bracket, and then you use some case statements. So you could say case, and then true, false, and then, like, uh, well, let's look up here, true, false, um, and then we'll say, Sum. Now that's supposed to be divisible by four, but I'm not going to go copy this symbol. Let me just use four. How could I make it say none? How about true and true? That changes it to none. Okay. Uh, tuples and match and now you see how this version of it works and as I said I really prefer this solution one because if you think about all of the combinations of uh, whether it's divisible by four and uh, seven you've got those four and this is a kind of nice way to think about it and the program here just expresses this truth table Okay, I think that's the end of that.